Every year, a transformation occurs and new monsters roam the planet. They're everywhere, on the streets, in your schools. Have you seen your office lately? Summer leads to these infestations. They eat large quantities of food, grow up to a foot taller, and grow hair in strange places. But the smell, oh my gosh, the smell. That's the worst of it. The name of this monster? Teenager. Co-op placements make them unavoidable. With changing bodies, they don't know how to take care of themselves. And until they discover deodorant, they can be smelled from miles away. Is this an exaggeration? Uh, maybe. But a new teenager just might not have figured out a shower a day keeps the stink away. So, how long is too long between showers? Some say to shower every single day. Some say every two days. Some say twice a week is fine. And some, some say not to shower at all. There are people out there who simply do not shower. But what exactly happens to the body if you were to just stop showering today for the rest of your life? You want to try this experiment? Well, first, how often does an average person shower? Some shower every morning before heading to the office. Others wash their hair every night before bed. Some shower every two days. Every three days? Well, maybe that's pushing it. But it's not outside the norm. Some dermatologists claim humans shower too much. But here's the thing. By showering so much, you're creating more damage than good. Yeah, your body is currently, and is always, covered in bacteria. But most of it is actually good bacteria. Washing it away all the time creates an imbalance in the skin. Now, don't get me wrong. If you work out every day or do a job like picking up garbage in Florida, you should shower off that sweat on the daily. In fact, now I think is a great time to hit that like button if you think it's normal to shower every day. And be sure to subscribe for more facts like how experts recommend showering once or twice a week. So, if showering every day isn't all that necessary, why don't we just cut it out altogether? Well, here's what would happen if you stop caring about personal hygiene. Any avid camper would know that without soap, soon enough, body odors are destined to occur. It's natural. You sweat, release oil and grease, and some areas on the body just don't get enough air. Anyone within a 10-foot radius would be in the danger zone. And if you work in an office, well, your co-workers won't be very happy. Let's think about all those spots on your body where you produce the most oils. Under your armpits, behind your ears, on your face. Well, now that you haven't showered for a month, wart-like growths are now growing in those places. And maybe more. Not only that, but the cut you got last week from trying to be a real-life fruit ninja hasn't been cleaned. And now you have an infection from all the dirt getting into the wound. You're covered in acne, dandruff, rashes, yeast infections, and crust. Delightful. A body left unwashed basically reverts back to medieval times. If you're not careful, you could bring back the plague. Well, maybe not that. But in medieval times, it was considered shameful to sit naked in hot water. It was thought to make it easier for the devil to enter the body. Although, we've got to say, the smell of not having a shower for a year is in no way heavenly either. But there were no showers in medieval times, just baths. And even then, a lot of people still remained clean despite this. So, new experiment. Stop showering, but find ways to remain clean. If there's dirt on the skin, it can be scraped or washed away with your fingernails and saliva. If you were stuck in the wild, this would be the best way to keep clean. Let's go even further back than medieval times. Ancient Romans cleaned with oils and a long metal stick to scrape away grime. As long as you avoid the buildup of dirt, you're practicing healthy hygiene. Now, these methods won't leave you smelling like a summer rose or a mango coconut shampoo, but at least you won't spread the plague to your co-workers. I think it's time we go to the experts. Dr. John Fielder is an Australian hygienist. His life is hygiene. So, does he take a shower every day? No. He washes with river water and exfoliates with sand. Fielder claims that using soaps and shampoos gets rid of the body's natural oils which help against lice and helps the skin absorb vitamin E. Maybe it's time to think about ditching that shower. Think about how much money you could save on water and how much time. With all that extra time, you could become a chess champion or learn to fly a plane or climb Mount Everest or, you know, sleep an extra 10 minutes in the morning. Some companies are even climbing aboard the showerless train. One company called Mother Dirt sells a mist spray. This live probiotic spray will restore the body's natural oils and bacteria. It restores moisture to the skin as well. 
The company even claims you won't need products like deodorant or moisturizers. They say that 100 years ago, the body had an ammonia oxidizing bacteria that would protect the skin, absorbing sweat and dirt. But this legendary bacteria has been wiped from human existence due to soap. It's said to be the reason more and more folks are developing allergies. So wait, I'm not supposed to be sneezing every spring because a flower grows? A flower that has existed alongside human beings for as long as they've been on the Earth? Hmm, I guess that kind of checks out. All right, showering is out. Natural body oils are in. Let's ask Amu Haji for some tips. This man holds the current longest running streak for no showers. Haji hasn't showered in 60 years. The man eats rotten porcupine carcasses. Uh, okay. Haji cuts his hair by burning it with fire. Well, now that just sounds unsafe. And he smokes! A lot. Okay, I take it back. Just talking about this guy makes my skin crawl. Haji has his own lifestyle, but doesn't seem to be following the healthy cleansing processes outlined by natural dermatologists. So it hasn't really been proven that these switches from showering to not showering really work, considering no one seems to have gone without a shower for more than a couple of years. And we can't all follow the Haji way. But maybe showering a bit less is good for everyone. A study in the UK proved that citizens use 150 liters of water each day on showering, flushing, and general bathroom duties. Yeah, I know, I said duty. And that's not even counting embedded water. Embedded water is a term to describe all the water that has been used so that an average person can go about their day. This means all the water used to grow the vegetables and meat you eat, to grow the cotton in the clothes you wear, even a piece of paper uses water. Paper comes from trees, and trees need water to grow. We use so much water every day. On top of the direct 150 liters, there's about 3,000 liters of embedded water used in our daily lives. By showering less, or taking shorter showers, cause come on guys, the shower is not where you should be going into your deep thinking, we're helping reduce water shortages, food shortages, and helping maintain ecosystems. The all natural lifestyle makes you a hero. So let's take this experiment even further. How about you stop brushing your teeth as well? You save water, you save money on toothpaste, and you save two minutes every morning and every night. Sure, not brushing away the dirt that can get into your bloodstream may cause pneumonia, staph infections, and even heart attacks, but there's gotta be benefits, just like how there are benefits to not showering, right? Uh, no. After 24 hours, the bacteria in your mouth will have feasted on all the leftover plaque and bam, you have gum disease. Dentists recommend brushing at least once a day to avoid gum disease and at least twice a day to avoid cavities. Not brushing your teeth is just something you can't get around. 700 to 1,000 types of bacteria live in the human mouth. Scientists claim that things like toilet seats and poles in the subway are actually cleaner than our mouths. Don't go licking subway poles though. Just brush your teeth every day. So the mouth needs to be cleaned, but what about the hands? Sure, they touch a lot of things on the daily, but there's no way they have as many germs as the mouth. That is kind of true, actually. Studies suggest that using too much hand sanitizer and overwashing your hands can weaken the immune system. It's another reason more people are developing allergies. Overwashing can also dry out your skin and make it crack. Well, no more hand washing will save so much time, and your hands will be smooth and soft. But not washing your hands can lead to more colds. However, on the plus side, you're strengthening your immune system. But then again, it's easier to spread food poisoning. The substances produced by the body when it undergoes food poisoning can contain up to one trillion germs. This means it can be spread easily and quickly. You're inevitably infecting everyone around you, and just the smallest touch near the eye will give you a bad case of pink eye. Did you think only children can get that? No way! Get ready to wear an eye patch. You're also unknowingly spreading germs that a small child still developing their immune system could pick up. Wow, only a real jerk would do that. All right, let's bring back the hand washing. But how about hair? We've touched on it a bit, but hair is often washed in the shower. Once the natural oils are restored, you'll never have dry hair again. It'll also have this great shine like you've been in a shampoo commercial with Fabio. However, on the other hand, soon enough, all the dirt, dust, and dry skin will build up. Your head will get itchy and your scalp will hurt. And for any of you long-haired folks out there who wear your hair in a ponytail too long, imagine that pain, but every day. 
After six months, your hair follicles could get clogged and your hair could stop growing, or worse, fall out completely. Well, then you'd have no hair to wash or not wash at all. But you can wash your hair without actually washing your hair. It's why things like dry shampoo exist. It comes in a powder form and spraying it on will help absorb excess oils. So you can survive without washing your hair, but it's not pleasant. What about the face? You know what many people call the money maker. If we're washing the body too much, then we're probably washing the face too much. Some people have pretty extensive skincare routines when it comes to the face, like regular micro-needling. Micro-needling involves giving tiny punctures to the skin with sterile needles to cause a deeper layer of skin to rebuild. Well, not washing your face does have the same effects as not showering. Your oils will return to a natural balance. This can reduce acne. Plus, overwashing can lead to dry and irritated skin. But a buildup of dirt can lead to infections and can age your face faster. And who wants to look 60 years old when they're actually 30? All in all, hygiene is a personal and almost unexaminable thing, considering all the germs we've talked about that are invisible to us. And unless you're camping alone on a faraway island where no one can smell you, a shower is probably something you want to stay consistent with. It doesn't have to be every day. In fact, dermatologists and eco-scientists would prefer you to shower less. But you should shower enough to not offend your co-workers. The air is for all of us. Don't contaminate it. <laughs>